Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming Seth Bullock, the Spirit of the West. Of 76, Dakota was the crime. In 1876, we came from the states, some left, some died. Those were the days the West was wild. We mined with pans and picks, and death wouldn't make its mark in time in the days of 76. Deadwood was 200 miles from the nearest railroad. On the way to get in here is in a wagon, on horseback, or you walked. We had an expression back in those days, the cowards never started, the weak, they died on the trail, and the fools went on to Wyoming. <laughs> You're going on to Wyoming, aren't you? We're coming from, I expect so. A couple of things in my life I'm darn proud of. One of them's this little hotel down the street here that still bears my name, the Bullock Hotel. I built her in 1895 and I built her last. She's holding up pretty well. Another was a resolution that I introduced into the Montana Territorial Legislature to set aside the Yellowstone country as a national park. It's a cool camp, ain't it what you're waiting for? Temptations lurking at every door. You bring your back in the streams all day. And every night you go to town and give it away. Now there's a lot of things that a lady couldn't do back in those days. You, you couldn't vote, you couldn't gamble, you couldn't go into saloons, you could not wear trousers or these sawed off things, and you could not ride a horse a la clothespin. Now, this is not a now Darla, as you well know, a lady like yourself rides a horse side saddle like this. Not a la clothespin. Like this. Yeah, she's a whip, crack and move, whack her, she can cuss the blue streak, make it on every man blush. She's the calamity of the Oh, there's a little bit of calamity, Jane, in each and every one of you. One night, however, a gal barged into Bedrock Tom's place, and she did not saunter in by mistake. She knew exactly where she was going and why. Everything stopped. Everybody knew whose wife she was. She was looking for her husband. He was playing poker and losing as usual. The jackpot in the middle of the table was a magnificent heap of gold pieces and bills. Well, she didn't even look at her husband. As she flung herself up against the table, scooped the entire winnings off into her apron, and walked out the door. Nobody said a word. Let her go like she'd won it fair and square. Nobody ever mentioned it or denied her right to have it. But nobody ever played poker with her husband again. <laughs> now that single event in history, the killing of Wild Bill Hickok, did more to put Deadwood on the map than the thousands of gold seekers who came into the gulch. Barely a man he fought for the north. He could shoot with both hands from a running horse. By the time they drove old Dixie down, he had a brand new name. Wild Bill, a reputation is a dangerous thing. It was there I was to meet a man who'd have a tremendous amount of influence on me, and well, on the entire country. I was out riding the range one day looking for strays, and came across what appeared to me to be a couple of suspicious looking tent horn gamblers or cattle rustlers. Well, little did I know I was about to meet a gentleman by the name of Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> now, when Theodore was elected president, I thought some of us should be there to represent the West that he loved so much. And I rounded up 50 cowboys. We all took the train to Washington, D.C. On Inauguration Day, we rode down Pennsylvania Avenue, creating considerable excitement, roping the occasional pedestrian. Of 
course, all the boys wore six shooters. They couldn't resist firing off a shot or two in the air. Some got shot, some got rich. In the days of 76. In the days of 76. In the days of 76.